The Church of 40,000 Corpses sounds like the title of a Rob Zombie movie, but it's actually the BBC's description of the Sedlitz Ossuary. Located 50 miles east of Prague in the Czech Republic, it houses chalices, ornate wall ornaments, and even a chandelier built from the bones of more than 40,000 skeletons. About 30,000 of those skeletons belong to people who succumbed to the Black Death during the 14th century. On its own, that's an ungodly number, even for a church. However, it accounts for just a tiny fraction of the plague's total death toll. What madness is this? Plague. Plague. Like no other. The BBC says an estimated 25 million people, over a third of Europe's population, succumbed to the plague. Historian Ali Benedicto provides an even higher estimate, writing that quite likely around 60% of the populace perished, and it was a horrific way to go. People developed intensely inflamed lymph nodes and would vomit or cough copious amounts of blood. Death typically came within two days. Benedicto writes that the plague was unprecedentedly terrible and argues that contemporary Europeans had actually dubbed it the terrible death, not the black death. The Latin description of the plague, Atra Mors, lends itself to two interpretations because Atra translates to both black and terrible. Eventually, the terrible black cloud hovering over Europe dissipated, enabling society's long, arduous healing process to begin. But how did the Black Death end? Honestly, the true answer to that question could be found in the Sedlitz Bone Church, for all anyone knows. Because historians cannot, in fact, tell you exactly how the Black Death died. There are theories worth mentioning, but authoritative sources don't even fully agree on when the Black Death ended. The Science Museum of London, for instance, says it lasted from 1347 to 1351. Benedicto claims it spanned the years 1346 to 1353. Further complicating matters, while the term Black Death refers to this relatively limited interval of time, in reality, the plague persisted for centuries, ravaging Europe, Northern Africa, the Middle East, and Asia in uneven waves. The last major plague outbreak, though, occurred in London between 1665 and 1666. Some historians credit advancements in medicine for stemming the spread of the plague. Notably, during the first wave of the Black Death, societies did begin implementing measures such as quarantining patients and isolating people. Other experts view the issue through an evolutionary lens, claiming that genetic changes in the plague bacterium or its carriers broke the cycle of outbreaks. Per the journal Emerging Infectious Diseases, the Black Death marked the emergence of the quarantine. Back then, the word quarantine which comes from the Italian term for 40, referred to a precautionary measure imposed by European port cities. Incoming ships had to rest at anchor for 40 days before landing. This was distinct from the practice of isolation, which entailed separating sick people from the healthy. With quarantine, seemingly healthy people who were exposed to the plague had to remain sequestered just in case. Some locales went to great lengths to keep people away from each other. As noted in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases, in 1374, Authorities in Italy declared that every person with plague be taken out of the city into the fields to die or to recover. In 1377, authorities in what is now Dubrovnik, Croatia, required anyone arriving from a plague-ridden region to enter quarantine for 30 to 40 days. Additionally, a treatment facility was built outside the city for sick residents and outsiders. Hospitals erected to combat the plague stayed in operation until the 1900s. The plague never completely kicked the bucket but it's a shell of its hellish self. Live science explains that the present-day plague evolved from a less virulent species of bacteria, Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, which often causes mild stomach infections. However, the bacterial strains that brought Europe to the brink of breaking resulted from two mutations. The first alteration cursed the world with Yersinia pestis, which had the capacity to cause pneumonic plague, a nasty lung infection that spread through sneezing or coughing. The second change spawned the bubonic plague that inflamed lymph nodes. A 2011 DNA analysis of 109 Londoners who died during the Black Death suggests that the bacterial strains responsible for the medieval pandemic went extinct. What changed? human evolution might have something to do with it. In a 2014 study by a Dutch university, researchers concluded that the Black Death forced affected populations to develop immunity. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.